Worldwide, we're going through a mass extinction. There is an annihilation of wildlife on this planet on a scale that has never been seen before. We can't continue to sit idly by while the entire planet goes extinct around us. Who are we to be here up against this almost impossible fight? Can't let the vaquita go extinct. We will, we will fight to the bitter end because we, we cannot lose another species. Learning about how many species are going to get wiped off this planet unless we act right now is the reason why we're dedicating our lives to this. Hi, I'm Ed. I'm a designer and illustrator, and I'm based in Cardiff. That was, that was great. Yeah, go on and see you better. Yeah. Hi, I'm James. I'm a designer and printmaker, and I'm based in Glasgow. Yeah, and we're brothers. We are brothers. For me, growing up, I've always seen my older brothers working in sketchbooks and we surfed a lot, so we love drawing waves and drawing things in nature. James's creative practice, I'd say meticulous attention to detail, perfectionist. Whether he's taking a photo with a, an analogue film camera or mixing ink some printing artwork by hand, he strives for that attention to detail in everything he creates. The way that Ed approaches his illustration representing species of the natural world is to capture the essence of the species in the most simple way possible. It was uh, 2015? Yeah, we launched it in 2015, yeah. We wanted to spark the natural curiosity that people have as children and show the importance of species, the beauty of species, the fragility of life. Talking through these ideas and, and bringing our crafts together that's where we, we sort of had the idea of creating a series of endangered species. We're using this project to learn about the environmental threats that are happening around the world. When we launched the project with the giant panda, the African elephant, polar bear, and... Western gorilla. Western gorilla. And I'd say that was when Under the Skin was born. We wanted to create artwork that would physically make a difference so that proceeds of the sales could go directly to protecting the animal that we're ultimately celebrating through the artwork. This idea sort of snowballed. The number of charities that we started working with accumulated and, and then we got to a point where Sea Shepherd, biggest global organisation in marine conservation, contacted us asking if we... We wanted to make a print to raise awareness of ocean species. <laughs> Didn't say no. Yeah, the founder of Sea Shepherd, Captain Will Watson, told us to print a species called a vaquita. And me and Ed were like, what? what's a vaquita? What is this? And we heard about this story. The story of greed, loss, and struggle for survival. We felt like we needed to see what's happening firsthand. When you're working as a designer in conservation, you, you might feel that to do it justice, you need to go out to the front lines and see it firsthand and get your hands dirty and helping in the conservation work. So we took up the opportunity. We just felt like we had to, we had to make this print. We had to collaborate with Sea Shepherd. We were just dropped into this other world. Kind of surreal to finally be there, stepping onto this ship, this legendary Sea Shepherd vessel that had seen battling whaling vessels across the world, and, and we were there with the crew. They almost have a symbiotic relationship between one another where it all works seamlessly. It's a really tight-knit ship. My name is Jack, and I am chief mate on board the Sea Shepherd vessel Farley Moat uh, for Operation Milagro 5 here in the Sea of Cortez where we are desperately trying to save the most endangered marine mammal in the world, the vaquita porpoise. The smaller species of porpoise, it's only about five foot long, incredibly rare and really elusive. So the vaquita has been living in the upper Gulf of California for hundreds of years. They are a predator and like any other predator, they play a huge role in the ecosystem. Their decline has had an impact that we don't quite understand yet. Just a few years ago, the count of vaquitas, it was more than 700. And here in 2018, there is less than 30. We're watching a species going extinct. The upper Gulf of California is one of the most diverse and rich places on the planet in terms of wildlife. Within an hour or so, we had dolphins riding alongside the boat. We got sightings of a fin whale and calf. Everyone sort of gathered in groups at the front of the vessel. That was a reminder that not only were these guys ocean activists, but they were all like animal lovers, and that's why they're ultimately all there doing what they're doing. 
poachers in the Mexican cartel are destroying a whole wealth of biodiversity in the upper Gulf of California to go after the Totoaba bass. People might be asking, why is there such a big race to catch this Totoaba sea bass? And the special thing about the Totoaba is it has a bladder in it that in China is thought to be of some magical healing powers only for the super rich. It's been aptly dubbed cocaine of the sea. $50,000 to $100,000 sold in the black market. Crazy prices, absolutely insane. So They just cut out the swim bladder, throw the fish back into the water, take the swim bladder back to shore, sell it to the Mexican cartel. And the unfortunate thing is, the exact methods of catching the Totoaba, unfortunately perfectly designed to catch the vaquita by accident. They use these nets, uh, these nets are called gill nets, that essentially is a big long wall of death sitting in the ocean. The sea shepherds are basically playing a cat and mouse game, get as many and retrieve as many nets as possible in a quicker amount of time. 10 nets a day. We can find the 10 nets through the night using a combination of the radar, the sonar, and the drone. The longer the nets get left under the water, the more likely it is for these animals to be trapped. So Sea Shepherd are systematically trying to get as many as they possibly can. As quick as they get in the water, they're trying to get them out. It can take between half an hour to two hours to retrieve these nets from the ocean. So after this coordinated team effort to retrieve it and get it out of the ocean, we succeeded. We finally got this net aboard and we got a message from the bridge saying, OK, another two nets. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. Uh, we've got really, really good at finding nets. We've developed all these methods where it can be four o'clock in the morning in the pitch black and we can locate a net four miles away. As the night sort of set in, that was when the work begun for the Sea Shepherds. It was tough, it was physically tough and mentally exhausting. Like, it's hard work and, and this was before we even got into seeing the devastation of the dead marine animals. In the last three years, we have freed 3,000 animals from these nets. It's not only an activistic program, but they're using science and meticulous recordings of data in their battle against the poachers. We're patrolling waters where there are essentially poachers working day, but mainly at night in the areas, and the obvious nature of the relationship between Sea Shepherd and the poachers, they're working against each other. Jack pointed at the map and he said, all these dots, probably about 30 dots on the GPS tracker, and he was like, all of those were illegal boats. You wouldn't be able to pay anyone to go out into the Sea of Cortez and have poachers running around us threatening our lives. You wouldn't be able to pay anyone to get covered in dead Totoaba when trying to pull up a, another gill net for the 11th time that day. The scope of these issues, just how enormous these issues are that we're facing. Someone like Sea Shepherd are up against, putting everything into it and seeing the struggles. I felt like, who are we to be here up against this almost impossible fight? Because there is a war on wildlife happening right now. Seeing how hard work and dedicated the crew were, we really felt compelled to create a piece of artwork so that would push our own craft. Which comprised of 13 layers, the most challenging screen print to date. But first, what is a screen print? The thing about screen printing is it's an incredibly labour-intensive process. I would say about 10% is actually the time that you spend printing, 90% is actually preparing for it. The artwork is all printed as a black layer, so it can be exposed on a light box. So you start by coating the screen. Um, it's got to be coated with an incredibly even, thin layer of emulsion. Once you've coated the screen, you need to make sure that all of the acetate sheets are in exactly the right place. Whatever's black blocks the light from hitting it. Take it through to a washout room. Whatever was black on the screen falls out, so you're almost creating really intricate stencils. All the inks that we use are powder-based pigment inks. We don't use acrylic. Acrylic uses plastic. We use paper from a company called Fedragoni, who are sponsoring us. They work with the World Land Trust to protect old growth forests around the world, so all the paper we print with is completely carbon neutral. Every layer needs to be printed in a really precise way, because mistakes are really obvious. There's a huge range of ways that you can get misalignment. You can get misalignment by having the paper in different places. You can get it by the alignment tabs moving on the press. Someone could send you a dodgy file. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
using a squeegee to pull the ink through so it transfers from the holes into the screen onto the paper below. Print, stop, wash the screen, print, stop, wash the screen, over and over and over. You lift up the press and you can see the artwork that you've printed. Everything James has been describing, this whole process, that's just for one layer of the screen print. This is not the final artwork, this is just the wrapping paper that's going to wrap our final artwork. During the days on the Sea Shepherd vessel, it gave us a really nice opportunity to meet and chat with the crew members. There's an initiative that they do where they can cut off the lead weights from these nets, melt them down and convert them into diving weights, which also brings in revenue for some of the local fishermen. Spending time with the Sea Shepherd crew gave us an opportunity to learn their stories and actually this team of hardworking conservationists that we looked up to as being sort of like the proper conservationists, you know. We got to learn that they hadn't always been conservationists on the front line. I'm an aerospace engineer. I'm a deckhand. I'm a wildlife photographer. I'm a seaman. I'm a biologist. My favourite example was actually the engineer. He was doing it for years on a tuna trawling vessel and he had the realisation that he could do that exact skill for Sea Shepherd. That is the seed of a really powerful idea. You can look inward to what you're already doing and bring that to the fight for conservation. And I'm a conservationist. And a conservationist. And a conservationist. And I am a conservationist. That's what we want everyone to realise, that everyone has the ability to create positive change, no matter what skills they have. All I do is put some ink through a screen onto paper, but I'm using it for positive change. Future of the Vaquita, its future is still uncertain. There's now reported 15 Vaquita left in the world. For the bigger picture, it's not just about the Vaquita. This is one species, this is one threat, this is one decline. <laughs> one story of a species disappearing and these stories are all over the world. The bigger takeaway for us from the trip is something that could be applied to the wider context of what's happening in today's mass extinction. The threats that we're facing on this planet can be overwhelming, but the beauty of such a challenge is that every single one of us can make positive change, mm. no matter what you do. I will never be able to learn everything about screen printing in my life. And considering biodiversity loss that we're facing on our planet, we have got a lifetime's work ahead of us. To be able to continue doing that with my brother, there's nothing more that I'd rather do.